Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to put a little bit more detail on the concept of the conic sections like we saw in the first video. Here we're actually going to show you the graphs of the four objects we're going to learn a little bit more about, the parabola, the circle, the ellipse, and the hyperbola. Now, the parabola, most people understand that the general equation for the parabola is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and if the parabola has the vertex here at the origin, we write it simply as y equals ax squared. a positive means it opens upward, a negative means it opens downward. But we're going to take a look at the parabola in a more general uh, form in terms of the focus and the directrix. And so what we're saying here is that the parabola is defined by a curve such that when you pick any point on the curve like this right here, that the distance from that point to the focus and distance from that point to the directrix the uh, directrix is always equal. So that defines the shape of the parabola. And that will then give us the general equation that looks like this, where x squared is equal to 4p times y, where p is the distance from the vertex to the directrix and from the vertex to the focus. So we'll see a little bit more detail about that. That's just the general concept of what a parabola is in more general terms when we talk about conic sections. And you'll see that there's a relationship between this equation and the general equation that most of us are used to. The circle is something that's a little bit more straightforward. If we place the circle at the center, the general equation for the circle will be x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is simply the radius of the circle. So the distance from the center circle to here, to there, to there, to there is all r, and so it simply defines the equation of a circle. If we now stretch the circle, either in this direction or in this direction, we end up with an ellipse. So here we have the ellipse where we stretch it to the right. If the distance from there, from the from the center to there is a, then you can see that x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1, with b being the distance from there to there and from there to there. Or if you then take the ellipse and you, you center it like this, we simply exchange the a and the b, and then we have a new equation for ellipse where the ellipse is elongated in the vertical direction instead of the horizontal direction. So you can see that that's how we can define an ellipse in a very simplistic way. And finally, the hyperbola, you can see the simplicity comes from looking at the ellipse and looking at the hyperbola, and instead of having a plus sign here, we simply put a negative sign there. Again, we still have the distance from 0 to a and from 0 to negative a, from 0 to b and 0 to negative b. We draw a little rectangle there. We then draw lines that go through the corners of the rectangle and then you see when you draw the hyperbola that it becomes asymptotic to those rectangular lines so it's not exactly like you have two parabolas that are facing the opposite direction that's kind of what it looks like but not really because parabolas keep on moving outward and the slope of the parabola keeps changing where for a hyperbola the slope eventually becomes asymptotic to a straight line so the slope eventually becomes a straight line not so much for like it is for a parabola but also you can have the hyperbola opening upward and opening downward, which means we simply exchange the y and the x, so now we have y squared minus x squared. And again, if we then reverse the direction of the, the size, for example, of the rectangle, where this is a and this is minus a, this is b and this is minus b, we would then write the equation of a hyperbola like that. Again, this is just simply a quick overview. I don't expect you to understand much about this yet by just looking at this particular video, but at least you can kind of get a general overview for it. And now in the next so many videos, we're going to go through the detail, explaining very carefully how to come up with these equations, what they mean, and how to solve the problems that you'll end up having to solve regarding these four conic sections. So at least this gives you a nice quick overview and onward to the exact, to the more detailed videos coming up now where we're going to explain exactly where these things come from, how to calculate these equations and how to relate this equation to that equation and so forth for the other three conic sections as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned. We'll have a whole slew of videos ready for you to go.